All right, folks, so here's that crude self runner I was talking about here. So I decided to take away the uh, oscillator because it was um, confusing people because that was just my way of getting quick DC over here. It's actually disconnected. So then I got capacitors and just to sell all DC here and doing the same thing at much lower potentials, obviously. So the LED here, I don't know if you see it, but even though it blinks, it's much a it's a much smaller blink there because my potentials are much lower than when I was charging it with the oscillator here at over 100 volts. So this is native DC and I've got the transformer over here with the output but this time I got it so you can see the uh, kickback spike which is a spike now because it's under a load because I'm sending that back and it's going anywhere from 14 to near 20 volts coming back and um, that goes back into this capacitor bank here keeping us a nice charge which is well over the cell's initial um, what it should be able to charge because the cell is like on its own about half a volt to one volt keeps the dipole open on its own no continuity between the, the electrodes here and it gives us this pumping action nice spike here 16 18 13 14 16 17 so you get the idea these capacitors have potential of charging even higher up because it's they're at 6 volts and there's like close to 20 volt spikes coming back at them. So now it looks more like a spike because unlike the previous video, I had no load here. I was just showing it to you open and it was giving you much more of an AC like sine wave. Now it's looking more like a spike and that's okay. It's just pretty well to be expected, I suppose. And as you see, people were complaining saying oh it's not really over unity because it's dampening it's dampening look at it after a second or two well we've been talking now for a while and where's the dampening where's the dampening it's the same spike over and over again it's a pure DC system no fancy but the cell does its thing and as I've talked here 6.05 it's not going down it's being regaged that that spike is much more powerful than what that trigger is I mean the scope sometimes has a hard time getting a fix on it but see there 17 volts there it goes again you know where is the dampening where is the dampening oh my goodness they're saying you're not showing us anything good. It dies out after a few seconds. No batteries. Nothing. Peg cell does what the peg cell does best. Diode that sends the kickback back into the capacitors here. There's my 17 volts, 16 volts. It's a really repetitive cycle. So I just want to keep recording it to show you folks 6.05. It's regaging itself pretty good. But again, I hardly have enough to blink the LED here. But that's what it's doing. And that's enough to... The cell creates a feedback, flips the polarity, it gives a spike. The process resets over and over again. But of course, you know, folks, I don't need any... Um, LC circuits or anything like that here. The only reason I have the transformer is to just show you this action. We can bypass a transformer as I've shown in other videos and you see that kickback and I've demonstrated the inversion of polarity with the meter live on the cell when it tries to, um, when it sees an external load, flip the polarity inverts 
and it raises very high in potential. And in a series DC setup, they combine. So there's the feedback mechanism, pulse base at this point, without any special mechanisms. And people were telling me, you know, give us a video of a self-looping. Give us a video of a self-looping. I said, there's no reason why it can't. It might not be anything spectacular because I am limited with a few little wires and things around here to show the effect. But, you know, anyone who understands a device that could maintain its electric dipole open and self-regage and invert polarity, ferroelectric response, knows what you can do with that, you know. But I am limited. And, you know... There it is. Seventeen again. So what I'd like to do next is maybe use this as a as an environmental antenna here. Rectify that. Add it to the series DC cell because what we're doing right now we're self looping, okay? But take advantage of this state and use it to amplify perhaps incoming signals. I'm thinking extra circuitry down the road, like maybe a MOSFET when the polarity flips on here, that turns the MOSFET off. And that could trigger something over and over again. Maybe a cap dump or an additional something. But, you know, one stage at a time, folks, I can only move so fast. And I understand people are excited and so am I. But I just wanted to make the point that um, when you got something that generates its own potential, you know, it's not about, oh, can you self-loop it? It's just figuring out which method is actually going to be more efficient so you can maximize the effect and take its full potential rather than just do it as a normal little cell that runs an LED, you know. Nice to, to know that it does all that, but if you can do something else with it that makes it more efficient and you can trigger AC actions and all that, I mean, it just makes sense to explore the possibilities. So there's that spike again, you know. So to all those people that say, oh, it's not good, it's dampening, look at all the dampening. Yeah, well, look how long we've been talking, no dampening, folks. And of course not, you know, you see the trigger, you see the input and the out, and, and, and one is much more than the other. So, of course, I have losses on such a flimsy system. If I were to use real heavy gauge wires and clean it up a little bit, add a few environmental antennas to this, like Tom Bearden would say, use the environment. As additional input this can work very very good folks but you got to take it in its proper context you know and it's it's not ridiculous claims and sometimes if you don't understand or the new ones that come here they got to watch the previous videos to understand what the peg cell is and what the peg cell does before you make a conclusion here so again folks all DC no transistors, no fancy switching mechanisms. You don't even need that transformer. I can bypass it right here. It's just a way to give it feedback because what's the point of, in my earlier video, I was just sending it directly to the scope. So, you know, wasting it. And I thought I explained that. But anyways, with the help of a diode on the secondary side, you can indeed feed it back. Crude, but effective. So, until next time, folks, and again, I just want to show you this quote-unquote non-dampening response. Still getting 17.2 peaks there, just like when we first started, folks. And of course, as long as no one touches this, it's going to self-regage. I mean, just think about the natural source of, like... Just from this diode here, it's loose, but you see, this is like an antenna setup at the same time. It'll help. I mean, it won't hurt it. So you may as well maximize the effect and put some real loop on there like this. And just additionally, whatever happens to be in the environment, you know, just use that.
you know, anything to trigger the cell's nonlinear ferroelectric response. That doesn't need to be anything big, folks, as you're seeing in here. Charge capacitors, a bunch of half-dead batteries, you know, just to make sure that your mechanism can feed it back once in a while to, to, to maintain the electric dipole open, essentially. And in a sense, it is a, a form of a closed loop, but not in a traditional electrical conducting kind of way. So, as I've said before, there's no free lunch. You're going to have to put a little bit of trigger to maintain your electric dipole alignments. But it's nothing, nothing like having a real current closed loop load. So, as long as you can offer that regaging mechanism, whichever way you want to do it, if you've got a system, whether it's uh, Floyd's uh, barium ferrite based transformer or something that is more simple like this, in Tom Bearden terms, it's all about regaging it at the right moment to trigger the proper amplification effects. So I think this is all lining up into what I'm supposed to do here. And um, with that said, I'm going to let you go. I want to look at this one more time here because I've been talking for a while. And I just enjoy showing that waveform peaking at like 17.2 volts intermittently. When that big spike, when it catches it anyways, 17.2, see? So again, all to all of those who complain and criticize, 